How do you fancy painting a puffin in watercolour? Now let me show you some little video clips from my main Patreon video on how I painted the puffin's dinner. Let's get started. Now the first thing that I need to do with this is look at all the colours and the textures within the, the, uh, the sand eels because they're very silky, very kind of glossy aren't they? Because they're wet obviously, so they've been kind of pulled out of the water. So to kind of work on this I need to kind of wet the area first of all just by using a size 1 brush and just dampen that paper down. The thing is I don't want it wet, kind of like a waterfall, I don't want it kind of really soaking wet. Because I have my board on a slight angle as well, I'm going to make sure that my board isn't too angled, otherwise it's going to really run down that paper. Once that's soaked in there, just that little bit, I'll start to think about the colours I want to add. So I'm going to start off with a very kind of bright blue, so a bit of a, like a cerulean blue, intense blue, those kind of colours. But I want these colours to like a watery mix, I don't want them too, kind of too thick to begin with. So use it as you would normally do with watercolors. I want to build these layers up bit by bit, step by step. And as you can see, I'm just kind of popping into just a touch of yellow ochre. I want to warm this up a little bit as well. So it's amazing actually when you look at um, like a fish's scales, especially even sand eels like these here. There's so many colors in there, there really is. The more that you zoom into a photograph, the more you look, the more that you will see. So even now, as you can see, a lizard and crimson, I'm going to pop in there. Just kind of warm it that little bit more. The key really is thinking about the shape. So again, we're looking at the reference photograph, looking at the shape of all the kind of details within the sand deals that you can see. So I'm going to kind of paint two on the video for you right now. I know this is just a cut down version of my main Patreon video. I know a little bit of an advert, but I've got to say it just so you can see what I do on how these work and how this goes together. So if you want to see all this in real time video, obviously pop along to Patreon for the full kind of three plus hour lesson on how to paint this amazing looking puffin. Such lovely creatures. Mind you, that beak is very colourful as well actually. So now I'm going to go in with a thicker mix of intense blue. So I want this like a creamy consistency um, because all the paper underneath is nice and dry and because it's dry, that now allows me to put another layer over the top. So I'm going to switch to my detail brush, which is a size double zero, and start looking at all these details within there. But you can see with this, it's got even darker, so I might have darkened the colour down, so I can start building that detail over the top. I want to do this gradually as well, and I've got to think about the shape again because I'm constantly looking back and forward at that reference photo. I know I've mentioned it twice already, but I really do. you really got to keep looking. So now I'm looking at the darker areas in between as well. Still got to go darker yet, but I'm gradually building up the layers as I go along and tapping in those finer details within the sand eel. The key to this as well is thinking about the shine on the sand eels um, because they're really, really shine, as I said earlier, because they're wet. So you got to Try and think about that while you're adding these colours in. The thing is, well, I don't want to use like a, a black on its own because black can be quite dull. Okay, even though I do use lamp black, I do tend to add a colour to that. So in this case, I'll probably add a little bit of kind of intense blue to the colour. The kind of colours I use, I tend to use mostly Winsor and Newton. Okay, because people do ask me that question, what colours are you using, Paul? Uh, so these are Winsor Newton Professional Paints, which I tend to prefer to use. I do use the student quality ones as well. What I tend to find with the paints is that with the professional version, is that the pigmentation within the half pan blocks tend to be a little bit more concentrated, so they tend to go a little bit further as well. So it's definitely worthwhile investing in better quality paints. I always say to my students, buy the best that you can afford, okay? So just adding just a touch of watercolour white over the top, just kind of fine tune this to really give it a bit more of a sparkle. 
Bearing in mind you can add a touch of colour over the top of that as well in one fell swoop, mind you. Okay, so if you want to highlight it, you can do. So there you go, that'll give you some idea on how I painted the sand eels, or should I say the puffin's meal, within its bee. Now if you fancy having a go at this and working on a complete video tutorial, I'll guide you through step by step, showing you a variety of techniques on how to do that. I'll also give you the outline drawing, the PDF guide, and the photograph to work from as well. To find out more, just simply click on the links below. And remember to click on like, subscribe and share, and of course you can always comment down below as well. Now the question of the day is what is your favourite colour and why is that? Let me know, put it in the comments below, and I'll talk to you all again very soon.